Okay, here we go. I actually had a serious issue with, I thought I wouldn't be able to make the video showing the vampire juice. <laughs> My hemoglobin as a uh, holographic uh, magnetic uh, field viewer. And I took uh, the cell apart and I was looking for broken connections and it turned out being the wall wart. And the wall wart was uh, busted. Let me plug it in here. There we go. I was able to find another wall wart to work with uh, the LED ring. These are actually just uh, pieces of tape. This is actually called optically flat glass. Um, it's kind of pricey. There is an alternative that you could use. It works nearly as good. That would be uh, large uh, clear uh, filters uh, for the front of camera lenses. And the only thing that's uh, in here other than my blood is this stuff, and this is just a surfactant. This is basically like antique WD-40. It's called mouse milk. I know it's got a funny name, but uh, this stuff, if you just put it underneath, uh, between the uh, glass, would never show anything as far as uh, holographic, uh, magneto-holographic views. So that's the only thing, the two things that are in. To prove that I did it, this is for science. This already had a cut, and I did this about, uh, about less than an hour ago. And here is the uh, hemoglobin, or vampire juice, on uh, the cell. This was halfway through putting it on there, and then I added the uh, surfactant, which is, uh, of course, this stuff. So, it is real. I had to show you that as proof that uh, I did uh, suffer for science. And like I said, this is just tape, optically flat glass. Once you actually put the liquid between there and add the surfactant, you sandwich the top glass on the bottom glass, and uh, about 95% of the liquid squishes out on the sides, and then you wipe it off the sides. And the tape is just to hold the two pieces of glass together since they've got liquid between them. They don't slide off of each other. Since uh, the cell is actually so sensitive, uh, I rebuild it all the time. And so they just remove the three pieces of tape, slide the glass off, wash them, clean them, alcohol prep them, air blow them, alcohol prep them again. So if you ever mess up, it takes a long time to rebuild it. And let's take a look here. Yeah, let's uh, zoom in. Have a little uh, nice ring magnet here. There we go. And let's just place it there. Here we actually have, since uh, the magnetic field is a torus, and the ring magnet is a torus, you have uh, a conjugate torus. So you got the magnetic field that's already a torus, regardless of the shape or the size of the magnet, but I'm gonna move it around because it'll burn the image in. But you're looking at uh, my vampire juice. <laughs> I say that humorously. My vampire juice uh, between uh, the two layers of uh, glass here. You notice this uh, reddish orange uh, tinge to it. Almost uh, none of it's left, almost none of the surfactants left either, actually after you sandwich the glass together and squish it together. Let me actually take the phone out really quick, it's what I'm recording on, and do a side on view so you can actually see here. You see the little burn in marks. When I say burn in, it's not literally burning in, it's just so sensitive. I forget how many particles per deciliter of vampire juice you actually have uh, nanoferrous particles. I posted that on my uh, community page the other day. Let me put this back in here. And let's take a look. Let's talk about the magnetic field. People ask if you could see nanoparticles. Let me actually place it underneath here. These are just some scratches on the lens. You can see the burn in marks here. Let me place it. Underneath here, yeah, a little bit better there, and zoom in a little bit. Here you can actually see it. Everywhere you actually see light, you see constructive interference, i.e. magnetism. Everywhere you see the absence of light, you see destructive interference. And here we actually have a torus inside of a torus. We have a torus outside here and hold to represent the magnet. And we have another torus inside here. So they actually have the magnetic field of the magnet, and you actually have the magnetic field of the void. But uh, if you're able to look at it side on, you'll see a perfect uh, torus with a little uh, donut hole in the middle. That, of course, is the uh, shower drain, if you will, analogous. The sink here, you see actually a little bright white line. You see that right there. You see the bright white line here. What you're actually seeing where it's brightest here is the plane of inertia, where 
The magnetism and the dielectric don't cancel each other out, but it's the lowest null pressure point or the lowest rest point between the fight, if you will, and fight, of course, is an incorrect word, the fight between the magnetic and the dielectric. If I keep it there too long, you end up with a little burn-in. The burn-in wasn't too bad on that one. Let me switch over to a, a little cylinder magnet. And of course, the magnetic field is toroidal regardless of the shape of the magnet. This is a little uh, three-quarter inch uh, cylinder magnet. Here too, you can see perfect. See this white, white, bright white line here? That's the plane of inertia. This is where no magnetism exists. This is where magnetism, dielectricity, this would be the uh, zero or null point. We can call it the plane of inertia, the rest point. This is where centrifugal divergence, i.e. toroidal magnetism, uh, is canceled and where centripetal convergence. Here you can actually see, and call it a vortex, a black hole, a drain, whatever analogy you want. You're actually seeing it holographically here. Since this is red shifted over here, and this is blue shifted intent. I know that this is the uh, North Pole. We actually have a phase disparity due to geomagnetic precession because the magnetic field of the torus is spinning around and the average mean geomagnetic precession, also two called the Lamore frequency is 42 million Hertz, 42, roughly 42 million Hertz. And let me place it underneath, just one pole underneath. Of course, magnet doesn't really have poles. Magnet has the inverse of counter space and that's the three dimensional force divergence of the centrifugal magnetic field, or the tornado, if you will. Of course, the center of the tornado, and I've actually been in the middle of a hurricane twice. Once was in Daytona Beach. Very fascinating. This would be the calm of the hurricane. The hurricane's out here, and you have the eye wall where things are strongest. You can actually see that right here. Now, just take a look at this uh, magnet here. We're looking at one face up. It doesn't really matter which face. You can actually see these different pressure zones here. There's no magnetism essentially right here. You can measure that with the Gauss meter. Then we actually have true magnetism, which is where you place the seeds. You get those two by two by one inch neodymium iron borons. You place the seeds around the centrifugal edge. People will say, well, this is the side of the magnet. You know, it's all magnetism here. It's like, no, actually right here, there's almost no magnetism. The only real magnetism is right where I'm drawing it right now, the centrifugal edge. This is where the fountain is occurring. This is the uh, the hole of the donut, if you will. Your perfect analogy. And over here, we actually have where the donut is expanding, the centrifugal edge, where it's actually emanating from. Your perfect analogy. So this would be your shower head, and this would be your shower drain. Both of the same water, the same water that comes out of the shower head is the same water that goes down the shower drain, right? They're both water, right? Well, magnetism is a dielectric field. It's like saying, well, the shower head water is the same as the shower drain water. Yep, I get that analogy. I take a shower every day. Well, if you don't, you're pretty dirty. I do at least once or twice a day. So this is your shower head water, i.e. magnetism. This is your shower drain water. And you see this bright white line. This is the magnetism is increasing. And it's right here. Now, if I, once again, if I place it on its side, Underneath, I haven't placed it on, on the side, underneath, here we go. There we go, girlfriend, take a look at that. Yeah, let me shift it perfectly where we get a nice bright plane. Here you see it, it's a bright white line right here. This would be the, the rest point. Of course, we're not at the center of the magnet, we're looking at the edge of the outside of the magnet. Here you see these vortex drains, and you actually see the centrifugal, this would be the shower head magnetism. And this is the shower drain magnetism, but the shower drain magnetism is called dielectricity, like ice and water. We got different words, ice, water, steam. They're all the same thing. Shower head water is the same as the shower drain water, but they serve two different purposes. Everybody's fascinated by the tornado, but most people, almost nobody's been in the center of a hurricane. I have. It's more fascinating than the super strong winds. It's occurring out here. Yeah, great sound effects, right? This is more fascinating to me anyway. And this is what magnetism is. This is constructive interference. This is destructive interference. Well, that looks like a black hole to me. Yeah, it kind of does, I guess, right? I shift the magnet this way relative to the video. Maybe I get a better look here. There we go. Of course, the cylinder magnet wants to roll. There we go. Place it there. You see this? Right here, 
this bright white line. Of course, I got it split here. I can make it one single line. If I do it like this, I can get this this uh, null right here. Let's do a little bit of focus there. There we go. Focus. This is red shifted, and this is blue shifted. So this is the South Pole. Face disparity of 5, 1.618 of magnetism. And over here would be 1 ratio of magnetism. Hmm? Kind of simple. Might be getting a cold. Sorry about that. But this is my own vampire juice underneath this uh, supercell. Absolutely sure is. Uh, proved it to you. Uh, suffer for the science, right? There we go. See the drains there? Let's put the ring magnet back underneath there. I mean, actually, let's use a big uh, one inch cube magnet. Of course, you get the same view. Matter if it's cube or cylinder ring magnet, we're still looking at the magnetic field. There we go. Have I got it set at the right spot? No, I don't. There we go. See, this is a cube. Let's zoom out a little bit. I guess it doesn't matter what shape it is. Focus. There we go. Sorry about that wobble. Centrifugal magnetism. This is a hypertrochoid or spirograph pattern. Constructive and destructive interference. Same as the uh, lines and absence of lines that you see in the so-called double slit experiment. But double slit experiment is uh, a billion conclusions from a billion different uh, foolish people, mostly academicians, that don't know what they're experimenting with, i.e. light. Everything is the fight between the magnetic and the dielectric. This is the yin and the yang of the whole universe, the conjugate picture of the entire universe. Ooh, sorry about that wobble. There we go. And you see the layers of lines here. We got this dull line, a bright line, a darker line, darker, and it slips into nothing. Yeah. Let's put it right there like that. There we go. See this bright white line right here? Two dark lines either here. Here you can see the gradation. This is blue shifted. We know this is South Pole and this is red shifted. This is more apparent. This is a powerful magnet, actually. Mm -hmm. This is the yin and the yang of the whole universe. Yeah. Light and illumination, the one and the one. Remember the first two digits of the Fibonacci sequence, what they are? First two digits of the Fibonacci sequence are this one, and then the second one is one. It's not another one. This first one is the Agathon, the second one is the Euristos Dias. The Greeks called it Ananke and Dolma, all of which are untranslatable. If you understand it, you understand it. If you don't, you don't. No translation will help you on that. Let me put that magnet back. Oh, it's a really powerful magnet. And let's go back to the ring magnet. Everybody loves the ring magnet, seemingly so. Yeah, sounds like a quarter dropping, doesn't it? See there? We have a hole in a hole. Now there's nothing here. But we have the toroidal magnetic field here. We have another torus here, but since the ring is shaped uh, the same as the magnetic field, we have a torus here and a bigger torus here. We got a donut instead of a donut, but it doesn't matter which because the center is always nothing. But it's not actually nothing. It's not a thing. This is the shower drain of magnetism, i.e. increasing inertia and acceleration, i.e. centripetal convergence towards the null point. You see out here? You see these little bright white hash marks? This is the donut. There's another donut, which is the ring magnet, and then a donut where there's nothing there. But the nothing that's there is the magnetic field. But a magnet doesn't emanate magnetism. Sure it does. Everybody knows that. No, it doesn't. What the magnet does, since it's a point source object, is causing a phase conjugation to the ether. It's basically stacking the ether in its own geometry. You see the burn in here? I left it sitting there too long. This is, But this is vampire juice between these uh, two pieces of glass. My vampire juice, I say that humorously. Hemoglobin, yeah? Which has nanoparticles of iron in it. Focus. already burned it in. I let the, uh, the ferro cells sit there too long in that one spot. I already got burn ends right here. 
Look how quickly that appears. Isn't that neat? Everywhere we see light, we see constructive magnetism. Everywhere we see darkness, we see destructive magnetism, i.e. the dielectric. We actually have four donuts here. We got the torus out here, this torus to the magnet, the donut inside, another donut right here. They're all different. They're donuts inside of donuts inside of donuts, i.e. the magnetic field. Yeah. And right here, that's right. Hope you like these videos. If you do, um, you can contact me below. Any donations always warmly welcome. Thank you so much for watching.